so let us start so we will discuss today the friction and work and energy so friction comma work and energy right so the concept of friction is so as everybody aware of it so whenever you are trying to apply a force there will be a counter force that is going to be developed automatically depending upon the environment where you are located in so that force is called as a frictional force suppose let us take one simple example let us say this is the road on this road let us say we have our car and this car actually we wanted to move it so we will be applying a force here so we wanted to manually move this car and then actually you tried applying the force on this so this is the f and obviously there will be a counter force that is going to be developed by the road and that force actually will try to oppose this particular force and then it will not allow to move this particular car so if you try to draw the graph of the force so let us say this is the force what you have applied and this is the frictional force that it is going to develop so this frictional force as you don't apply any force let us say you applied zero force then there won't be any frictional force just actually it stays as it is and you start applying the force then actually the frictional force is going to be raised by this particular road when it is trying to move so it is about to move but actually it will not allow because there is a frictional force that is going to be developed by the road but if you don't apply no frictional force if you apply then it start developing it now you increase the force of your application so then actually the frictional force is also proportionally it will keep on raises and you increase the force further the frictional force is also raising further you further increase the force and further the frictional force is going to be raised so if you try to trace the graph of it this is how actually a proportionality graph actually is going to be developed between the force what you apply and the force what the road is developing on the car so at one stage what happens is now actually you keep on increase the force then at one stage this car starts moving in this direction obviously right so that is expected as you are keep on increasing the force then actually it starts moving it now there is the point actually so it leaves off and then actually it will not allow to offer any more frictional force to that extent and then actually there will be a drop of the frictional force and then actually whenever we start moving the car suppose actually if three people are moving the car and then actually once the car starts moving then we feel that comfortable that we can easily move it that means the frictional force what it is opposing the road is opposing the movement so that is going to be reduced once we start moving it so before movement we have applied more force once it starts moving then actually so it is actually easily moving so that we can feel so then actually the frictional force is going to be reduced then actually whatever the force you apply no more extra frictional force is going to be developed so this point of the friction is called as the static friction so this is the static friction and this is more static friction is more so this is usually represented with fs and this is more and once the car starts moving even then also there will be a continuous opposing force by the road on the car but that force which is opposing is lesser than what it was there earlier and this point is called as the dynamic friction so this is the dynamic friction so this dynamic friction is also called as the kinetic friction right so f is proportional to so f is proportional to the frictional force and at one stage actually so it stops off this is fs and then once it starts moving there is still the frictional force and this is what is called as fd which is not nothing but the dynamic friction now whatever the amount of the frictional force left over that will be used to accelerate the car so fs minus fd is going to be used to accelerate the car so with this acceleration depending upon the mass of the car so the car will be accelerated to the extent given by fs minus fd is equal to ma so even though if you are not applying the force and the same force is continued further 
and it will try to accelerate the car once if you are able to move the car. So this actually ourselves actually we can feel it. And actually on what factors actually this friction force is dependent. So one of the very very important frictional force characteristic is the frictional force is dependent on the normal reaction. So the normal reaction is going to be at this particular stage. It is exactly above. And then actually there is a normal reaction at this particular stage. So these two together actually we keep at the center of mass and then actually we treat as a single force called the normal reaction which is equal to R. And that is exactly above the surface. So as I stated earlier, the normal reaction is always perpendicular to the surface. Normal reaction is always perpendicular to the surface. always perpendicular to the surface and the frictional force is proportional to the normal reaction. Frictional force is proportional to the normal reaction. So here what it means for us is let us say the normal reaction is of R then R is directly proportional to F. So there are two different cases. One is the static friction, another is the dynamic friction. So in the case of static friction, so R is directly proportional to F. Hence actually, so this can be treated as there is some constant. So this is R is equal to some constant mu S to F. So this actually is treated as the static frictional coefficient. So this is mu S is called as the static frictional coefficient. And even the dynamic frictional coefficient also is dependent on, so this value, so this is, so this is written in the reverse manner. So Fs is directly proportional to R, so Fs is equal to mu S times of R. And similarly, Fd is also equal to mu D times of R. So there is a constant called mu D, which is called as mu D is equal to dynamic frictional coefficient. So dynamic frictional coefficient and these two values are very important in the calculation of the dynamics. Got it? So static frictional coefficient is always greater than the dynamic frictional coefficient because the frictional force at this stage is more than the frictional force at this particular stage as I explained in this particular graph. Got it? So do you have any questions on this understanding? Any questions? Right? And this discussion actually, if you try to extend it, frictional force is non-conservative force, is a non-conservative force. Now, we need to understand what is a conservative force. So, conservative force is nothing but Under the presence of a conservative force, if the particle is moved from one location, if the particle is moved from one location, and it reverses back to its original position. To its original position. If the effective work done is zero, zero then the force is called as non-conservative sorry if then the force is called as 
conservative force so this is called as the conservative force suppose actually if you take the gravitational force under the presence of the gravitational force let us say this is the sky and then actually the force field is actually downwards so hence actually whenever you leave your particle then actually it automatically falls in this particular direction so there is a force field that is always from the sky to the ground so this is the force field this is the force field so under this force field if you leave one particle here and then actually so it is coming and then actually bringing back to the ground position so this is the ground position so now actually we take one particular case now i start from here and then actually i tried lifting one particle obviously i have to apply the force against the weight of this particular particle so i have to apply a force against the weight of the particle hence actually i have to do the work against there is a force that is acting always downwards hence actually the work or whatever i do in this particular case is against the weight hence it's going to be of mgh so if you say whatever the work you do is positive and whatever the work that the particle is doing on us so it is going to be of negative value now actually what we do is actually we lifted the particle to this particular extent the work whatever we have done is the force multiplied the displacement so force is nothing but mg which is acting downwards and the height is whatever i moved is h so mgh is the work i have done and then if i leave the particle automatically it releases that work so whatever the energy it acquired it releases but the amount of the work it is going to release is of again mgh so that is in the opposite direction of whatever i have done hence actually the sum of these two values is coming out to be zero if this is the case then this field is called as a conservative field so this is the conservative force field so under the presence of the conservative fo force field if the displacement is zero then the work done is going to be zero so that is the meaning of it now coming to the frictional force what happens is suppose actually this is a table and then actually there is one mass of 10 kg that is present at this particular state now suppose actually i ask you to do, so i ask you to move this block for a distance of 10 meters so that actually it is coming to this location and then actually so here actually the 10 kg of weight actually is coming to this particular location now when you are trying to move this block to this location there will be a counter frictional force that is going to be developed and that frictional force you have to oppose it and then actually you have to do the work in moving the particle from here to here now what i do is actually i ask you to move it back again then actually i apply the force here and then there will be a counter frictional force that is going to be developed against your movement and this particle is moving back to its original position now actually if i say that actually you have not done any work so you almost actually you got anger automatically why because so with lot of effort actually you moved the particle from here to here and with again with lot of effort actually you moved the particle from here to here then if i say that you have not done any work automatically you will get anger right so this is not true because you have done work so if you notice in this particular case what is happening is this particle whatever is located here is moved to this location and then actually it is coming back to its initial position but still actually the work done while moving in this particular direction is f into displacement is x and even in the against direction also this is again the same f into x so hence actually twice the work actually you have done but it's not like fx and minus fx where it is going to be cancelled like in this particular case so this kind of scenario is called as the conservative force field and this kind of scenario is called as a non conservative force field because here actually the work is going to be so actually you are doing the work in both the directions so here in one direction you are doing the work in another direction the particle is doing the work so this case actually happens when there is a restoring force so when there is a restoring force restoring force then so the force field is usually conservative right so this is usually conservative so now actually <clears throat> i hope you got a clarity on what is a conservative force field right
now you need to understand what is something called field right so i will elaborate the discussion on what is something called field so whenever we start about the force right so suppose like initial days let us say so this force got introduced somewhere, somewhere around 8th or 9th standard so that time actually so force actually is always treated as f is equal to mass into acceleration so this is mass into acceleration and actually if i ask you to identify the work done by this force actually immediately you say that actually work is going to be of force multiplied by the displacement and this is what actually we say that actually this is going to be of work and this equation is valid only when you are in ninth standard or 10th standard but coming to the plus 2 standard this discussion is going to be extended further suppose actually if there is a particle here and then if this is the force actually what you have applied and then this particle is moving in this direction let us say this is the displacement vector and this is the force vector what you have applied now the effective force that is useful in moving this particle is only f cos theta not the complete force so f cos theta is the effective force that is used in moving this particle for a displacement of x and out of this actually the vertical component of the force which is f sin theta so this is actually completely of waste it's so it's not playing any role in moving this particular particle so at plus 2 standard actually you extend the discussion so we don't say this is force now rather actually we call this as the effective force useful in moving the particle right so hence actually when we talk about the work at this stage so work is nothing but so f dot x so this is what actually you state the work you don't simply multiply the force and displacement rather we say there is a dot product between these two which essentially says that this is f and x cos of angle between these two this is the effect to work done in case if you apply a force and if the force is moving the particle from one location to another location now till now actually what were whatever we are talking about we will be talking about a single force so this is a single force and now at graduation level so the discussion is extended further to the force field so the force field meaning suppose actually the force is always having three different characteristics so the characteristics of the force is one is the magnitude of the force and the second one is the direction of the force and the third one is the point of application of the force so these are the three important parameters of any particular force we were talking about right now let us take one particular case now let us say the force that is going to be applied on this block of mass at this particular stage so if i leave it the weight is the force which is acting on this and then it will automatically fall down now this force now actually i move to this particular location and again actually i leave this particle again actually it is going downwards only now actually i move to this particular location again actually if i leave this particle it is again actually going down now where is the point of application of this force so wherever i am located there is the point of application of the force now how to quantify this so even if i move to a different location let us say i am in hyderabad and then actually so the particle is still moving the downwards if i am in delhi so even then also the particle is moving downwards and if i am in bangalore still actually the particle is moving downwards and if i am in chennai again the particle is moving downwards only so now where is the point of application of this particular force so here actually we cannot quantify a single point of application for this particular force so we have to come up with a new concept called the force field that means this is present everywhere so if it is present everywhere then that scenario of the field is called as the force field so there are different kinds of force fields that we will be talking about usually the most standard force two fields are three different force fields one is the gravitational force field
and this is what I just explained. So wherever we are present, there is a force there. So it doesn't matter where you are located on the earth, still actually there is a field of the force that is acting always downwards towards the earth. So that is called as the force field or which is called as the gravitational force field. And the second one is the electric field. So suppose if there is a point charge here of magnitude plus Q, then actually wherever you keep one more charge, then actually there is a force there. So if you keep the charge here, there is a force outwards. And if you keep the charge here, then actually the force is outwards in this direction. If you keep the charge here, actually the force is in this particular direction. Now it doesn't matter wherever you are located in the surrounding of this charge. So there is a force that is acting always on this particular one kilom charge. Hence actually it doesn't matter where it is located, everywhere it is distributed. And this scenario is called as the electric field. And this is called as the electric field. Suppose if you talk about a magnet, so magnet, let us say this is a bar magnet. And this is north pole and this is south pole. From the north pole, actually the force lines comes and terminates in the south pole. And even here also the force comes and the terminates in the south field. Meaning, suppose if I keep one Weber of this particular mag, so magnet, suppose actually if I keep a small magnet here, so this north pole and I keep a north pole here, then there will be a repulsive force on this and it will try to move. And at the same time on the south pole, actually it will try to attract this particular north pole. Hence actually, if you keep the north pole here, actually it will try to move in this direction. If I keep the north pole here and it will try to move it. And if I keep it here and then actually it will try to move in this direction. Suppose if I keep this, then actually it will try to attract in this particular direction. So that means this force line is originated from the north pole and terminated in the south pole, meaning if you keep your one, so if you keep one unit of the magnitude of the north pole here, then actually that will be moving in this direction and finally coming and then actually joining at the south pole at this location. Now it is the same case actually if you keep the north pole here, actually it will come and then it will join the south pole in this particular case. So in all the directions, if you notice, this is what actually is moving and terminating it. Now it doesn't matter wherever the magnet, magnet is kept, so it will be always present. There is a field like this. So this kind of field is called as the magnetic field. So magnetic field or magnetic force field. So this is one kind of scenario. And another third one is the fluid field. Right? Suppose actually, let us say there is a pipe. On this pipe, actually, the water is continuously moving like this. Now, here actually, if you try to trace any one particle, the force experienced by that particle will move the particle in this particular direction. So, at every point, actually, on this particular entire scenario, at every point, there is a force that is acting on the particle if it is present there and it will try to move it. And this field is called as the fluid field. Got it? So, here actually, it's not the single point force or it's not the single magnitude force, there are infinite such kind of forces that are present, but may be different in magnitude, may be different in direction, may be different in point of application, but still its influence is present everywhere and such kind of scenario is called as the field. Got it? You got? Because? Right? So this is what we meant by field. Now actually how to express this field? Now till now actually whenever we talk about the force, we always used to express this as 2i plus 3j plus 4k. So this is actually the magnitude of the force and the direction of the force. So both actually are comprehended in this particular vector. So this is how actually we used to express. Initially, suppose actually at 9th standard actually we were expressing the force as, so force is of magnitude 10 newtons. This is how actually we express it. So we are not even talking about the direction at the early stage. And then actually at plus two stage actually we were talking about the force vector which is expressed with the direction also included along with the magnitude. And then in the next case that is at the graduation level we talk about the variable force that is the force is expressed as so this is phi of x comma y comma z into i plus psi of x comma y comma z into j plus z of x comma y comma z into k. So this is the force vector at graduation level actually what we are talking about. And this is what is the force field. 
so this is what is the force field if you notice at every point on the x y z coordinates it is going to have different different values for these functions and that function actually at that particular instant it will have its own direction and its own magnitude so the magnitude is also variable and the direction is also variable and the point of application is at that particular point is nothing but x y z so given the point of application the magnitude and direction is comprehended in this particular vector equation so this vector this is a vector which is a variable vector and this vector is also called as the vector force field or vector field so this is the vector field now actually we will be dealing from now onwards only the vector force fields not the single force right got it so this is the field now whether this force field is the conservative force field or the non conservative force field that we can make out so that is suppose in vector calculus actually you might have learned that del cross e equal to 0 so if del cross e equal to 0 then e can be expressed as minus del phi so this is one statement or one theorem and in such cases if del cross e is equal to 0 or for our analysis actually del cross f this is in the case of electric field we were talking about so del cross f is equal to 0 then f can be expressed as minus del phi or usually minus del b so both are one and the same where b may be a function of x comma y comma z so this is one statement now here if you are able to express the force such that del cross f is equal to zero then f can always be expressed in this particular format now this gives actually very great application in our analysis both in the fluid dynamics and even the work energy or actually in the vector calculus also we will be dealing to a greater extent this particular scenario. Right. So to the greater extent actually we will be learning all these things. Now and if del cross f is equal to 0 then f is called as f is called as the conservative force field. So this is called as the conservative force field and then f can be expressed as minus del v where v of x comma y comma z is called as potential function potential function and this function is a point function. this function is a point function meaning the point function meaning suppose actually if you take an electric charge here and it is having a magnitude of q and obviously there is an electric field in all the directions due to this particular charge so there is an electric field now here actually under the presence of this electric field let us bring one coulomb charge so let us take one coulomb charge here right see what is del so del actually you have to be aware of it so del meaning is equal to dou by dou x into i plus dou by dou y into j plus dou by dou z into k. So this is the del which is an operator. So this is just an operator in mathematics. So any operator in mathematics for that matter. So log is an operator and there will be inverse operator. Anti log is an operator. Derivative is an operator. Integration is an operator. Like that actually del is also an operator which will give the change along the x direction change along the y direction and the change along the z direction. So the vector comprehended change is going to be expressed if you operate del on it. So single derivative is nothing but suppose if you talk about dy by dx, you are talking about the change in the value of y when there is a change in the value of x. That ratio we were talking about. Suppose if you want to express del f, del f meaning f is a function of x comma y comma z or del v if you talk about v is a function of x comma y comma z so v is dependent on x and dependent on y and dependent on z also now if that is the case if i wanted to find out the change in the functional value of v when there is a change in the value of x and when there is a change in the value of y and when there is a change in the value of z independently or it may be combinedly if all the changes are happening x is also changed y is also changed and z is also changed then what is the functional value change if you want to find it out that is nothing but del f. So del f is nothing but the change dou f by dou x. 
So if you take up del V, this is dou V by dou X into I plus dou V by dou Y into Z plus dou V by dou Z into K. So this is the del V operator. So del V means V is a scalar value and this scalar actually we are operating within a vector operator where del is a vector operator and del V which will give the change of the functional value along the X direction, along the Y direction and along the Z direction which is a vector format we have expressed. Got it? I hope you got what is a vector operator, right? Okay. Now actually, so del V. So if F is a conservative force field, then F can always be expressed as minus del V. That is the theorem. Now, the definition of the conservative force field we have expressed as whenever we move the particle from one location to another location and then bringing back to the same location, the effective work if it is going to be of zero, then we say that that force field is a conservative force field. Now, in this particular case, suppose if I take this particular point, let us say the location of this is x1, y1, z1 and this is the location of the one coulomb charge, let us say. And then actually you tried moving this particle from this particular location. So like this and then actually you are bringing back to its original position. Now, if you notice the effect of work done in this particular moment is going to be zero. Why? Because suppose here actually there is a force in all the different di direction cycle that is going to be present. So there is a force, it is acting in all the directions. Suppose if I wanted to move in this particular direction, there is a component of the force cycle that is moving outwards. And then actually even here also, if I wanted to move in this direction, there is a component of the force cycle which is moving outwards. Now at this particular stage, if you notice, I wanted to move, but it wanted to move outwards. Now exactly the opposite scenario actually happens at this particular state. Now here if it is moving in this direction, here it is moving in this direction. But actually I am doing, I am moving in this particular direction. So essentially whatever the component of the work that is going to be opposed here is going to be aided at this stage and whatever is opposed at this particular stage is going to be aided at this, so aided at this particular state. So essentially if I move from this location and then coming back to this location, all the forces, additions and the subtractions are going to be compensated to each other. And then finally, we leave with a zero effect to work. So essentially, this is going to be a point function because it is a conservative force field. Now I give you one more example. See this, suppose actually I wanted to move in this direction. Now let us say there is a force field which is acting horizontal. So this is the force field. Now I wanted to move along this particular path. Suppose if I move at this particular point, it is aiding my movement and here also it is aiding my movement and here also it is aiding my movement and then actually here onwards it is opposing my movement and here it is opposing my movement and here it is I am opposing my movement. So if you notice in this particular stage actually it is aiding my motion and in this particular stage actually it is opposing it. Now actually essentially if I do and then come back in this particular stage and here actually it is opposing my movement. And here actually it is aiding my movement. So this opposition, this addition will cancel out. And this addition and this opposition will cancel out. Finally, wherever I started, if I come back to the same location, the addition of the force and the opposition of the forces are compensated to each other. And the effective work will be zero. Equal to zero. Got it? So the effective work is going to be zero. Now, Yes, the effective work is zero in this particular case. Hence, actually, this is called as the conservative force field. I hope you got an idea what is a conservative force field. So, this electric field is a conservative force field. Gravitational field is a conservative force field. Even the fluid field also, most of the cases, if del cross F equal to zero, there actually, we see that actually the conservative force field. So, that's why whenever we do the fluid dynamic analysis, the entire analysis is divided into two different sections where del cross E is equal to zero and where del cross E is not equal to zero. So if del cross E is equal to zero, then that kind of fluid field analysis we separately deal with. And that is almost 50% of our fluid dynamic syllabus which states that that is the potential flow. Separately we deal with it. So potential flow is a separate topic for us wherever there is a potential field which is nothing but the conservative force field analysis is going to be adapted over there. And if del cross E is not equal to zero, there we talked about the curly flow. That means actually there are rotational components of the forces where the force field is of non-conservative force field, then the analysis is completely different that we deal with separately. Got it?
right so let me explain so the point one first of all you need to understand what is the conservative force force field right so you understood what is the conservative force field so under the presence of that force field you start from that location and then come back to the same location if the effective work done is going to be of zero so that effective work you can make out here in this particular moment so the force is actually aiding my movement and in this particular moment the force is actually opposing my movement hence this aiding moment and this opposing moment will be cancelled out and then actually effectively no work is going to be done and the same thing actually is going to be done at this particular stage so here if i wanted to move it it is opposing if i move i wanted to move in this direction it is going to be aiding my force this opposition force and this addition force is going to be cancelled out and finally effective work done is going to be zero if i start from here and then finally coming back to this location is this understood right and this kind of force field is called as the conservative force field now the point function meaning the amount of the field or it is the amount of the potential at this particular stage is just dependent on this particular position now let me explain that in a little bigger way see this suppose actually i take only the electric field only now this is one location and this is another location now here let us say at this particular point i have a potential of magnitude v x1 y1 z1 so this is the potential now the meaning of the potential is potential as an english word if you talk about the ability so the ability to do work so that is nothing but the potential now how it has got that ability because actually somebody has given that ability to that now we take the simple case suppose actually if i move this pen from the ground level to this particular height now if i am moving from this ground level to this height here i myself actually doing the work on this and where i got that energy because actually i am eating food so as i am eating food then actually i have got the energy that energy i wanted to give it to this particle for that actually i wanted to move this from the ground location to this particular height now actually i have transferred my energy which i have got from my food so that i have transferred to this pen and then actually this pen is lifted to a height now this has got the ability to go back to its original position and this ability it has got just because i have given so as per law of conservation of energy energy can never be created nor destroyed so here it is nowhere we have created the energy so the energy which is in the form of the chemical energy that is in food that i have taken and that energy is converted into the mechanical energy and then actually i have transferred my mechanical energy to the potential energy of this particle so this is moved to this particular height with the same energy whatever i have spent so the work whatever i have done is exactly equal to the energy it has got hence actually it has got the ability to come to this particular location so it has got the ability to go back to its original position because it has got the energy and this ability which it has at this particular position is called the potential of this particle at this particular position now if i lift a little bit higher then actually it has got a different energy which is higher than the previous energy now it has got the ability to go back to its original position which is of a different height so each height actually is having a different ability and that ability is nothing but the potential of this particle so this is nothing but the potential energy we talk simply right now here actually how it has got the ability because it somebody has given now here if i wanted to say that there is a charge of magnitude q here now i wanted to bring one coulomb charge or actually one charge somewhere which is at infinite and actually i am bringing that particle to this particular location while i am bringing from infinite so infinite in mathematical terms it is different infinite in physics terms it is different infinite meaning so non reachable or not able to see or not having any influence on that place so that is nothing but the infinite so this is having a influence till this particular point let us say and we are bringing a charge where there is no influence of this particle that is far distance hence actually we started moving from there and then actually we have we came to the location where it started influencing the one coulomb charge to oppose now actually as it is keep on opposing i have to move against that particular force then i need to do the work because there is a force continuously acting on me i need to bring that force fully to this particular location now while bringing from here to here i have done some work and that work it has got now if i leave that particle automatically it goes back so the ability of going back going back it has got because i am doing the work on this so i have done the work on this hence it has got the ability and how much is the work i have done 
is stored in the form of the potential energy at this particular stage and that potential is nothing but the ability to go back to its original position that ability is quantified as the potential at that particular point now if i move to this particular location obviously it has got the ability to move farther distance than that so it has got a different potential at this particular stage so x2 y2 z2 so it has got the different potential that means it has got the different ability and the amount of distance it can go back is more so this potential is different and this potential is different so now if you notice the amount of the ability or the amount of the potential at any point is just dependent on the x y z coordinates of that point only it doesn't matter if i bring the particle from here to here versus if i bring the particle from here to here versus if i bring the particle from here to here in all the three different cases the moment of the displacement is different and the direction is different and the orientation is different but finally as long as you are bringing to this particular location it has got the same ability to move to this particular position only so this ability is independent of the path what you follow to got to that particular location and this nature of the ability is called as the point function it is just dependent on the x y z coordinates it doesn't matter whatever the path you selected in moving from infinite to this particular location so why because see this suppose actually i start from here and then actually i move to this particular location and come back now if you notice here actually if i move in this particular location this is going to be opposed hence actually it is adding and then actually from here onwards actually it is opposing my direction and then actually whatever the addition of the force that i have got from here to here is going to be compensated before i reach this particular point so this is adding my movement and this is opposing my movement and this addition and this movement are going to be cancelled out and finally whatever the work i have done in moving from here to here that is essentially useful for that so it is independent of the path whatever you follow always in the case of conservative force field so in such kind of places this is just a point function potentially is a point function which means it the value of the ability is dependent on where it is located it doesn't matter whatever the path whatever you follow to go to that particular location i hope you got it what is a point function right <clears throat> any questions on this right so now under the presence of the conservative force field meaning wherever del cross f equal to 0 now f can always be expressed as minus del v where v is the potential function this is the potential function now why this minus sign why this minus sign is if you notice let us take this simple case now actually i am bringing this particle from the lower potential to the higher potential now if i leave this particle the movement of this particle is from the higher potential to the lower potential see this so as you keep on increase the height the potential is going to be raised now the movement of this potential so the movement of this particle or the flow direction is always in the decreasing direction of the potential see this so this is a higher potential place and this is a lower potential place obviously if i leave this pen actually automatically coming down so why it is coming down because that is in the decreasing direction of the potential so hence actually this will always have a negative sign the force is actually always in the negative direction of the potential or the decreasing direction of the potential so there is a force that is always acting downwards which is the weight of this particle that is in the decreasing direction of the potential hence actually the negative sign is going to be associated always so this is one of the very very important understanding even the fluid for field also if you talk about if the pipe is in this particular way now the flow is actually if it starts from here it will go downwards because this is having the higher potential energy at this point and the lower potential at this particular point hence actually it is going to be flowing in this particular direction from the higher potential pot position to the lower potential position right so this is the lower potential position right so this is how actually the flow is going to be there always so if this is the case then actually so f can always be expressed as minus so do v by do x into i plus do v by do y into z plus do v by do z into k right so this is 
how actually you express it now this f actually if you can express as capital x into i plus capital y into j plus capital z into k where x y z are the components of the forces along the x direction and along the y direction and along the z direction this is going to be of minus dou v by dou x into i minus dou v by dou y into z minus dou v by dou z into k or x can be expressed as minus dou v by dou x and y can be expressed as minus dou v by dou y and z can be expressed as minus dou v by dou z so this is how actually we find the values of the force components along the x direction along the y direction and along the z direction and also you know this is being the f value now whatever the work we do under the presence of the force field which is a conservative force field if you want to find out the work suppose if you want to find out the work so dw is equal to f dot dr so f dot dr is nothing but the work done under any particular force so here actually f is the force field and dr is the displacement displacement or elemental displacement vector now here actually suppose there is a force field in this direction on this force field actually you wanted to move the particle in this direction so here actually you consider randomly one small element of the particle so this is while moving in this particular direction you have identified an elemental length of dr so this dr vector can be expressed as in the x direction dx plus in the y direction dy plus in the di z direction dz so this is dx into i plus dy into j plus dz into k and this is the elemental displacement i have carry forwarded under the presence of this force field now the effective work done dw is equal to f dot dr so f dot dr so this f actually we just proved that as f is a conservative force field this can be expressed as minus do v by do x into do v by do x into i plus do v by do y into j plus do v by do z into k dot dx into i plus dy into j plus dz into k so this is just the dot product of it now this is going to be of do v by do x into dx plus do v by do y into dy plus do v by do z into dz and this is the minus of now if you want to find out the total work done you just needs to integrate it now the total work done is equal to now this if you notice the exact differential so that is the function v actually if you try to take the derivative of it so v being the function of x comma y comma z then the derivative of this so dv by dt if you want to find it out this can be expressed as do v by do x into dx by dt do plus do v by do y into dy by dt plus do v by do z into dz by dt so this is how actually we find out the total derivative of any particular function so as it is a function of x comma y comma z if you want to find out the derivative with respect to t then actually this is dou v by dou x into dx by dt dou v by dou y into dy by dt dou v by dou z into dz by dt this is how actually we find the total derivative of any particular function you now this dt this dt this dt and dt if you cancel it out and we left with whatever is there is going to be equal to this one so dt if you remove it on either sides then we are leaving with only dv and hence actually this is nothing but dv where v is a function of x comma y comma z and the way if you express in this format d of something if you are able to express then this format is called as an exact differential so this is an exact differential meaning you are able to express everything in terms of d of so this d and this integral will cancel out and this is going to be of minus v of x comma y comma z so this is see this the work is nothing but the potential whatever we have calculated so as i said earlier if i move the particle from infinite to that particular position is nothing but the work whatever we have done is the ability that it has got to move away from that particular location again to the original position that ability we treat as the potential or whatever the work we do is exactly equal to the potential that it has got developed so that's what actually we can prove that 
So W is equal to V. Got it? Any questions on this? Right? So from this actually, we can state the fundamental theorems. One is the work energy theorem. Under the presence of the, under the presence of conservative force field, the amount of work we do is exactly equal to energy acquired by the particle. So this is what is called as the work energy theorem. Work energy theorem. Right? So work done is equal to the energy acquired. So the same thing, suppose under the presence of the gravitational field, this is one height from the ground level. So if you try to move this particle from here to here, Whatever the work we do, so you are doing against the weight which is acting downwards. Mg is always acting downwards and you move the height of H. So for Mg, you have moved the height of H which is the displacement. Mg into H is the actual work you have done. So this is nothing but the potential energy. So this is the potential energy and this potential energy is equal to the work done whatever we have done. So this is the work energy theorem. Got it? So, and then law of conservation of momentum or conservation of linear momentum. Suppose actually if there is no external force that is acting on the body, then actually the work done is going to be of, so the momentum is going to be of constant magnitude. So that is, if there is no external force, on the body then the momentum is conserved or the linear momentum is conserved so this actually we can mathematically prove see this actually newton's second law of motion what it states is f is equal to dp by dt so this is f value and p is nothing but the momentum so P is the momentum and this value P is expressed as mass into velocity. So this is the momentum and dP by dt is the force magnitude. Suppose if there is a block of mass on this, now if you try to apply a force on this, now the amount of the acceleration it has got is equal to dP by dt. So F is equal to dP by dt is the principle. Now, if you don't have this force which is equal to 0, then actually dp by dt is equal to 0. So, by making external force to 0, you are making dp by dt equal to 0. It implies dp equal to 0. Now, if you integrate on either sides, p is going to be of constant. So, the magnitude of the momentum is going to be a constant if there is no external force. Hence, actually this is called as the law of conservation of linear momentum. Right? So as long as there is no external force, the momentum is maintained constant. So that is P is equal to C. And the momentum is nothing but the product of the mass into velocity. That is nothing but the impact. And this can be further extended as impact force. That is dF by d. So f is equal to dP by dt 